morning morning dr rajesh morning sir good morning so, uh, sir students today uh, we have a special session i have requested uh, dr rajesh bojwani those of you who may not know he is the pioneer surgical gastroenterologist in the state of uh, rajasthan he is now working at the stmh hospital one of the very popular and renowned hospitals trust hospitals in jaipur so uh, he will be telling us about uh, management of rectal cancer so since this is an open house session i think i will request two or three student volunteers to chip in and uh, rajesh do you have any videos uh, to show how much time would you need oh uh, i have sir Uh, depending on uh, what's the format, I can show a video. Ha, just generally, case. we keep it as an open house session, more interactive. Students, yeah, yeah. will uh, present and uh, yeah, yeah. So, any of the students wants to come in? Who's there? Chitresh. Doctor Chitresh Shekhawat. Gopi. <laughs> One of you, come in, please. Unmute yourself. Ravin, yes, sir. Yes, Gopi, Doctor Gopi Ramu. Yes. So, um, uh, Gopi, tell us about uh, the types of rectal resections which you know. Uh, uh, sir, anterior resection, low anterior resection, and abdominal parallel resection, and complete mesocolic excision. Total mesocolic excision, and term is transanal uh, mesocolic excision of the rectum, rectal cancer. Rajesh, please carry on. Yeah, Gopi, I would like to correct you. Try to categorize the operations. Uh, sir, basically meant the type of rectal resections, and the rectal resections can be anterior resection, low anterior resection. Interior intersphincteric resection and then abdominal perineal resection. Now, whichever of these resections are there, they may or may not be combined with mesorectal excision, depending upon the indication and the tumor location. So, please don't confuse yourself with the uh, details of the operation. Rectal resections would essentially be categorized into anterior, low anterior, intersphincteric, and APR. And when you talk about TATME, it is just a modality of accomplishing the same uh, endpoint of the operation that we are trying to do endoluminally or from outside. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Gopi, as Dr. Bhujwani said, one is the longitudinal extent of resection, which is mainly at what level the lower uh, division is, and other is the circumferential extent, which is for malignancy uh, is. Uh, Uh, TME. So, Gopi, what do you understand by TME? Uh, sir, uh, total uh, mesocolic excision. We are removing. So we are talking the... in relation to rectum. Is it mesocolic? Uh, when we sir, talk. Meso... In... Hmm? Total mesorectal excision means we are removing the entire mesocolic intertoe with surrounding lymphatics also, sir. So, can you define mesorectum for us? What do you mean by mesorectum? What are its boundaries? Uh, sir, uh, posteriorly from the presacral fascia, anteriorly, it can go up to the uh, 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 seminal, uh, behind the prostate and, and the seminal ossicle, and superiorly up to the peritoneum, inferiorly up to the uh, sphincter, sir. So, are there any layers of the Fascia in the pelvis. Can you better? Always, always, always fascia, sir. Mm, no, the valdez and denonvillus is fine, but are there any layers, two layers of the pelvic fascia? Sir, I, I don't know, sir. So parietal layer and visceral layer. Okay, parietal layer no. is the one which covers the sacrum. Visceral layer is the one which covers the uh, the uh, mesorectum. Mesocor, mesorectum. 
and how do you define anterior low anterior intersphincteric and apr can you elaborate on that next anterior, student please be ready to come in anterior yes. section uh, we are uh, for the upper class humor we are doing the above the peritoneal reflection sir for low anterior section we are going mid uh, rectal tumors you are going below the peritoneal reflection and intersphincteric section we are doing the anterior rectum we are doing a coloanal anastomosis and apr we are doing the entire rectum with anal canal we are closing the perineum and making a permanent stomas rajesh would you like to refine yeah <clears throat> yeah so <clears throat> gopi basically the definition of these resections depends upon where you are doing the anastomosis okay if you are doing an anastomosis above the perineal uh, peritoneal reflection that is known as and anterior resection if you are going down below the uh, peritoneal reflection dissecting the rectum be it middle or the lower mm. it is known as low anterior resection then comes there then you can call it ultra low anterior resection that definition is a little confusing and arbitrary some people call it as an uh, anastomosis which is uh, in about 20, 2.5 to 3 cm from the anal verge but by and large these days for all practical purposes that definition of ultra low anterior resection has been kind of less popular the definitions that we use are anterior resection low anterior resection intrasphincteric resection and apr as you rightly mentioned okay depending on the tumor location by and large for all middle third and low anterior and lower third rectal cancers mesorectal excision has to be there to make it an oncologically complete or an adequate operation okay for an upper third rectal tumor which has a distance from the peritoneal reflection margin you might not do a mesorectal excision for a middle third rectal uh, tumor you might have, if you are have more margin you might do a partial in terms of partial longitudinal mesorectal excision but when it comes to circumferential it is always at the mesorectal fascia did you get my point yes sir are you sure yes sir yes sir okay so uh, gopi um, intersphincteric resection what is the plane of dissection when we say intersphincteric what exactly do we mean uh sir we are going up to the perineum and we are uh word itself uh, says it is it an intersphincteric between the sphincters yes sir so between the, which sphincters which is external and internal which is not removed which is preserved and sir we are preserving the external sphincter sir so it is between the internal and the internal external, external sphincter yes sir just just wait for a minute i think we have lost our uh, speaker rajesh i think you please carry on in between okay <clears throat> okay so uh, let's uh, go to the clinical management uh, uh, we have uh, pranoy we have gopi we have praveen and we of course have uh, dr desai with us dr desai sir can you would you like to comment upon the types of uh, rectal cancer resections no please continue the discussion i am just here to watch uh, okay so uh, gopi what is uh, suppose there is a patient who comes with the a uh, history of uh, blood with stools and a digital rectal examination it is a female who is about say 50 years and on the digital rectal examination you find a growth at 5 cm how do you proceed what and don't detail it just uh, tell us the bullet points as to how you are going to proceed with this uh, sir i will do the routine blood investigation and then i will do the 
uh, anyway the uh, mouse is palpable per rectum so i can take a, i will do the proctoscopic and i have to do the biopsy in the meantime i'll ask my medical gastroenterology colleague to see the upper extent of the lesion so i'll do the uh, colonoscopy in the meantime i have to rule out any synchronous lesion in the colon and i have to stay the disease for stay the disease for local i have to do the mri pelvis with cct abdomen to look for any liver medicine and in the meantime chest x ray also i have to do and marker c c e a so let's let's go one by one why do you want to do an mri pelvis why not ct uh sir uh, for uh, rectal cancer mri pelvis it will give the adequate de- uh, details the extent of the lesion and we, it will tell about the nodal status in the mesorectum in the meantime we need to know about the extra mural venous infiltration of the tumor uh and many of these things are suggested by ct also what you have to say is that for all pelvic pathologies soft tissue delineation is better by mri mm-hmm. and when in term, when it, when we are talking in terms of rectal cancer particularly the circumferential margin the mesorectal fascia the peritoneal reflection and extra muscular uh, extra mural vascular invasion these are shown better by an mri and the t3 staging and uh, the t staging is better by mri mri okay okay and sir. why why only ct upper abdomen and chest x ray why not uh, ct chest and upper abdomen uh uh sir uh, uh ideally we have to do the ccd chest and upper abdomen to rule out the yes. so when when test. in examination you have to say that you will combine it with ct chest and upper abdomen and it has to be contrast enhanced okay sir okay okay, okay. Sir. and what should be the basic uh, minimum mri that you would order for uh Uh, sir i i don't know it has to be 1.1.5 tesla 1.5 tesla there in the guidelines minimum is 1.5 tesla that gives okay. you enough delineation of all the soft tissue that we are looking for okay sir okay and oh, why oh, is cea yeah sir sir no no please 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 carry on and uh, why cea uh sir actually we are doing a cea for all uh colorectal malignancy as a marker sir it act as a, a prognosis how does it help uh, it will help as a prognostic marker during a follow up sir okay is there any other help what if the cea is very high 200 uh, sir we are think in terms of patient having a uh, met met into the metastatic lesions sir. in the liver or lung yeah so a very high ca suggests a high disease load but a low ca say 4 5 10 10 is basically used to have the baseline which can be used in the follow up of these patients therefore a ca is must before surgery so you were saying something yeah so uh... when you said ca is prognosis during follow up these are two different things prognosis you can predict even at yeah. the moment of uh, diagnosis so as dr bojwani said very high ca level means that you have to very carefully look for metastases and some people may even uh, say that a C- they would do a pet scan in such a situation which yeah. otherwise they would not do second is uh, if you are planning a major uh, procedure like say exenteration then in presence of high ca you will have to be very careful because there is no point in doing a major disabling high morbidity procedure if there is distant disease and then during the follow up it helps not for prognosis it is for recurrence that a rising ca level uh, is recurrence so prognosis and recurrence prediction are two different things it helps in both and you you should start by saying that it is not required for diagnosis but it helps in Uh, uh prognosticating or assessing the stage of the disease or the disease burden and then during the follow up it helps in recurrence any other investigation gopi which you did not mention which is there in the armamentarium when looking at rectal cancer uh, sir endo endoscopic ultrasound 
trans so why you to, did not mention endoscopic ultrasound uh, sir uh, endoscopic ultrasound it will give a better t staging and n staging nodal staging but uh, uh, we are not doing routinely endoscopic uh, ultrasound sir so in the exam you have to mention what should be done and then we come to what will be done or what can be done okay so sir. in a case like this would you do an endoscopic ultrasound if not when do you do an endoscopic ultrasound what is its utility uh, sir when uh, there is a uh, uh, there is a confusion in uh, t staging and especially in a male patient we are looking for a local extension of the disease like seminal vesicular involvement in that scenario endoscopic ultrasound will help to deal with the extent of the disease sir uh no i don't think that is correct the answer is that endoscopic ultrasound is useful only in early stages when you are suspecting an early lesion so in our routine clinical practice a symptomatic patient when uh, the patient comes usually the disease is advanced and the advanced stage of the disease will be shown on cross sectional imaging that is a ct scan endoscopic ultrasound is to know whether you can avoid new adjuvant treatment that is number one so whether it is t2 n0 disease in fact even in t2 many people would say that we would like to give new adjuvant treatment that's a debate which we will do later or if you are dealing with a very early lesion and you want to do a local treatment not a resectional treatment a complete resection but a, a, a transanal local treatment minimal invasive uh, local excision of the tumor so to select cases for no new adjuvant treatment or for local excision and endoscopic ultrasound is a good investigation if the disease has already gone beyond the rectal wall or if you see obvious nodes on uh, ct scan then endoscopic ultrasound usually doesn't help rajesh would you like to yeah so uh, uh, gopi in the examination you have to base your answer saying that based on your digital rectal examination which has given you an idea about the extent of the a lesion anteriorly posteriorly fixed or not bulky or not and the sigmoidoscopy or the colonoscopy that you have done and the mri that you have already done and the biopsy that you have if you are suspecting an early lesion which is t1 or t2 you would like to do an eus to make sure that it is t1 and t2 because you already have the mri in place and wherein uh, as sir mentioned you do not require any new adjuvant treatment and you are opting to local treatment endoluminal local treatment or even if it is a resection okay but anything beyond t2 you will need an mri and you will base your decisions uh, based on mri okay sir come in ad ad who is ad please can you please identify yourself as dr anand has been requesting please put your name and preferably your hospital name also when you are logging in anushree would you like to come in dr anushree hello yes. good morning good. sir yes sir so uh, uh let's go on to the surgical procedure can you describe low anterior resection very briefly in about 10 steps Uh, sir are you asking me yes yes uh, uh, sir i am from radiation oncology department uh, oh sorry uh, you are dr yes, anushri sir. loyal i was I'm yes sorry. sir dr anushri is my colleague from radiotherapy sorry okay no no okay, okay. i will okay, i will okay, have sir. you come in later when we talk of new adjuvant treatment i'm sorry yes sir uh, chitresh dr chitresh yes sir yes how do you do low anterior resection so it's basically a sphincter preserving surgery uh and it will be done in two parts uh, first via abdomen and then via perineal yes sir is that all you will say in the exam uh, no sir uh, we'll start with the abdominal uh, resection and we'll go in a in the holy plane of fill and we'll take care of the presacral fascia that uh, we don't enter in that presacral fascia and we'll dissect all till the uh, pelvic floor and then so, we'll start before sorry sorry before you reach up to the presacral fascia is there something important when you are going down where do you make the first incision 
after you have opened the abdomen or after you have done it uh, laparoscopic so you are describing open fine so yes, is that the first step that you get into the presacral fascia how do you get there so uh, sir we'll start from uh, uh, we'll start opposite to s1 and we'll uh, we'll start from dissecting from mesorectum sir we'll start from me mesorectum and we'll go down till so that's my question how do you reach is mesorectum in the peritoneal cavity when sir, you when you uh, open the abdomen you enter the peritoneal cavity yes sir mesorectum is a intra peritoneal structure no sir it is extra peritoneal yes, sir. Yes, sir. so which means you will have to open the peritoneum, open the peritoneum. once more yes, to get into yes, the retro yes, or extra peritoneal space yes sir in upper one third of the rectum uh, peritoneum is covered by both the areas yeah, anteriorly as well as laterally so we'll open that peritoneum and we'll go deep down into the mesorectal patient sir. so you open the peritoneum on the upper third of the rectum that is the first step yes sir you don't mobilize the sigmoid descending colon uh, sir, we'll mobilize it till splenic flexure. So before you get May into the presacral sir? plane outside the mesorectum, uh, what step you have to take, what important structure comes there which you have to identify and preserve? Yes, sir. First, first of all, we'll mo mobilize the left colon till splenic flexure and we'll, take, do care that? Of, uh, we'll take care of two things. Sir. First, uh, ureter and uh, Another one is gonadal vessels. How do you identify the ureter? Uh, sir, it's... Uh... A first year MS student has scrubbed with you. How yes, will you tell him or her how to look for ureter, where to look for it, and how to confirm that this is ureter? Where does the ureter lie? What is the landmark which which it crosses where you say that? It, it crosses the internal iliac arteries. The bifurcation, the bifurcation Bif of the common yes. iliac. So you should say it's a long tubular vertical uh, structure which I can see that it is crossing the pelvic brim and then it crosses the bifurcation of the common iliac artery. How do you confirm that it is the ureter? Um, by simple tapping it, sir. We will tap it and we'll check the peristalsis of ureter. Hmm. Okay, carry on. Uh, and then after mobilizing till splenic flexure, uh, we'll go. Uh, we'll Why open do you the want to mobilize the splenic flexure? You are doing a low anterior resection. Why do you want to mobilize the splenic flexure? Uh, sir, we need to do the anastomosis in the deep down. So we need to have the that part of colon which can go down and uh, get the anastomosis, colovenal anastomosis. Sorry, to get a better, again. So to get a better conduit length. Yeah, so to have a tension-free anastomosis slow down in the pelvis, you need adequate length of the colon. Hmm. Then, uh, sir, we'll open the peritoneum and we'll, we'll dissect the mesorectal fascia in the holy plane of fill. Uh, and then uh, we'll complete the dissection till uh, the uh, till the pelvic floor. Sir. So, how do you identify this holy plane? What is this plane? Can you describe it? And at at surgery, how do you know that you are in the correct plane? So, it's a cobweb type of plane, uh, which is which lies between the presacral fascia and the posterior mesorectal fascia. Sir. May I interrupt, sir? Yes, yes, Rajin, please. Yeah, the simple thing is whenever you start a cancer operation, the first thing you need to do in the abdomen is to look for metastasis and liver metastasis as well in the operative session. Omentum and a, a, a whole peritoneal cavity has to be examined. Only then you can proceed with this step of the operation. Because it'd be very foolish if you do that and you find that there is peritoneal deposits all over the abdomen. Yeah, so as a standard answer, the anesthesia, the position, the incision, the exploration, and then the procedure. You should make it a routine when you are describing any operative procedure. Okay. 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 Yeah. 
so yes you were telling us about the holy plane of healed yes sir it's it's a plane between the posterior mesorectal fascia and the presacral fascia sir yeah so the visceral layer of the was the mesorectum on all sides and now we are talking of the posterior surface of mesorectum and the presacral fascia so how do you know that you are in the correct plane so it's a cobweb mm -hmm. so it's a cobweb type of fascia and uh, there is no vascularity in that area sir. no vessel so if you yeah you should be going in an avascular plane if you get bleeding that means you are not in the correct plane yes so where how can do you, how do you identify this plane uh, i mean of course you have mentioned the appearance but how do you reach that plane was a technical tip how do you get there sir uh, sir after piercing the posterior mesorectal fascia but then posterior mesorectal fascia you won't be able to pierce if you basically when you start doing the operation you have to make an incision on the mesosigmoid yes okay so where the sigmoid ends the rectum starts usually it is at the rectus sacral promontory if you have done it because there are two planes you know one can go deep to the nerves the other can come anterior to the nerves and the nerves have to be preserved so how was the technical tip to identify and be there with this plane because mistakes can happen so the technical tip is that you have to abut the inferior uh, the, the, the superior rectal artery or the inferior mesenteric artery or the rectal vessels okay so if you keep dissecting just below the superior rectal vessels or the inferior mesenteric artery you will be reaching or working in that plane to begin with at the mesosigmoid or the mesorectum when it is starting you got my point so that's yeah. the tip to prevent injury to the nerves and also be there in the mesorectal plane okay okay so we are going uh, about the technical part of the anterior resection you mentioned low anterior resection when you mentioned low anterior resection you also mentioned that you will try to do a perineal part so low anterior resection may not necessarily have a perineal part of the operation uh, i understand you mentioned that because and because a coloanal anastomosis would be required but a coloanal anastomosis can also be done without approaching from the perineal part it all depends on what kind of dissection finally you have achieved in mobilizing the rectum how much margin you have got below the tumor margin and therefore it can be achieved uh, from the abdomen be it open be it laparoscopic and at times when it is not possible you might have to resort to the perineal route to do the anastomosis okay so it is not necessary okay Okay. even for even for intersphincteric resection it is not always necessary to do a part of the operation from the perineum in some patients it can be done from above also depending on the tumor location as we discussed okay. yeah carry on so, carry on yeah so any specific uh, what's your uh, uh, chitrish uh, how do you prepare the patient what's the bowel preparation what's the other preparation what's the uh, important uh, uh, pre operative preparation let's be categorical and discuss only the specific parts not the general because we have a time limitation for a low anterior resection what would you do uh, sir we will keep the patient in mem overnight and we'll give the pre operative fluids and uh, antibiotic shot and will prepare the colon by uh, around 8 to 10 hours so you will give a mechanical bowel preparation yes okay what else any role for low molecular weight heparin sir if, uh, if the patient is uh, uh, if the patient is on anticoagulant or the patient is heavily weighted or bmi about 40 so there will be a low molecular weight at that not otherwise so not routinely sir 
Okay, so because the format of this particular session is different, we are not going into the controversies and the details of the controversies. But many authors and many surgeons believe that for any low pelvic surgery, uh, low molecular weight heparin might be required. Yeah, Oops. because you yeah. already so, have two or three risk factors. One is yeah. malignancy, other is the pelvic surgery, third is prolonged surgery, fourth is positioning. So there are several risk factors for venous thromboembolism. I think more and more groups would probably give yes. prophylaxis uh, in yes, this sir. group of uh, patients. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, and uh, so, uh, sir, are we supposed to discuss all the technical details? Yes, yes, please. Or, or, this is or do we discuss surgery. other, other things? Okay, Acha, mainly it is operative. Okay. So, uh, and um, we are not discussing. Uh, okay, maybe we can ask so how, how, how to do the division of the rectum and how to do the anastomosis. Yeah. So, what are the methodologies? Yeah. Uh, Say, so suppose we are doing, let's first discuss the anterior section and then discuss the low anterior section. When it comes to anterior resection, I mean the anastomosis is being done above the peritoneal reflection or the tumor is situated above the peritoneal reflection and we are anastomosis just at the peritoneal reflection. So what are the ways to anastomose? Sir, either it can be hand woven anastomosis or it can be using a circular stapler. Okay. And uh, what are the... Do you do a mesorectal excision there? What makes you decide upon the mesorectal excision in such a patient who has a tumor which is, and the lower margin of the tumor is about one centimeter from the peritoneal reflection? Yes, and, it is a, and it is a T3 and 0 tumor. Yes, sir. We'll do the mesorectal excision because uh, uh, when we go up in the pelvis, um, when we go towards the upper rectum or middle rectum, the thickness of mesorectum is a bit high. Um, it's a bit um, uh, it's a bit more when compared to the lower rectal part. So the chances of uh, CRM positive will be higher in upper to middle rectum. So we'll do the middle rectum. No, no. Chitresh, the question is what you have to see the intent of asking the question also. Dr. Bojwani specifically said that the tumor is in the upper third of the rectum. So in the tumor of the upper third of the rectum, is it necessary? What is TMA? TMA is total mesorectal excision, which means you go down up to the lower limit, which is up to the pelvic floor. Yes. So in middle and lower third rectum, there is no debate that you do a TMA. Question yes. is in upper third, is there a debate Two different people follow different uh, uh, extent of mesorectal excision? So do you do a total mesorectal excision? No even if the tumor is in the upper third? That is the question. No, sir. No, sir. No. I don't think you can so, say no straight away. You should uh, say sir, that means uh, earlier recommendation was that for all rectal tumors, total mesorectal excision. But now some surgeons, some groups for upper third tumor may not do a total mesorectal excision. Why not? What is the harm? So the morbidity... Will get uh, will get less benefit and more morbidity in in such a great extent. What morbidity? Uh, what morbidity? Because from oncological point of view, it is good that you are removing all uh, possible lymph nodes in the mesorectum. The problem is when you do a mesorectal excision, you are bearing the rectal muscular tube because you have to go down up to the rectal wall. So you are compromising the vascularity, and in, in an upper rectal tumor, because you are going to divide the rectum above the peritoneal reflection because we are planning an anterior resection, this uh, part of the rectum, which is below the peritoneal reflection, where you have removed all the mesorectum, the blood supply may be compromised. So that is why some groups now say that for upper third tumor, they would not do a total mesorectal excision. Mesorectum is excised, but not total mesorectal excision. Okay. Yes, so Dr. Bojwani was now asking suppose you about... if you have such a suppose yeah. Yeah. if, if there is such a similar tumor which is uh, T3, uh, I would say T3 uh, A, or I mean, let's let's for at the moment consider T3 
how does your strategy change? If there is a T3 tumor on MRI, yes. middle third tumor on digital rectal examination, it was at about five to six centimeters from the anal verge. You could feel the lower margin of the tumor. Upper margin of the tumor, as suggested by the endoscopist, was approximately three centimeters higher. So the longitudinal extent of this tumor was three centimeters. It was situated more on the posterior wall. And as I mentioned, it was T3 on MRI. How do you proceed? Sir, we'll plan for a sphincter preserving surgery and we'll probably go for low AR, sir. Low okay. anterior. See, for, for a middle third rectal tumor at six centimeters, as it is, I think sphincter can be preserved. So sphincter should not be a problem. Yes. But would you not resort to any new adjuvant treatment? Uh, so, uh, yeah, we'll give the new adjuvant uh, for at least six weeks and we'll wait for another six weeks sir, and we'll plan for surgery thereafter. What new adjuvant? Uh, so, uh, capacitamine. You mean chemotherapy, no radiation? Uh, how do you decide? How do you decide? Uh, tell me which patients deserve neoadjuvant treatment and what is the uh, what is the intent of neoadjuvant treatment in rectal cancer? Sir, anything uh, that goes beyond the muscularis layer, uh, that is beyond T3 and more, will need the uh, uh, neoadjuvants. Why do you give neoadjuvant treatment? Uh, to get uh, to reduce the size and to get the better planes for surgery. Sir. First of all, you should not say reduce the size. You should say downstaging. Second, what did you mention? Sorry, please. So to get the better planes for surgery thereafter. Better planes would try to be very scientific when you talk. You are a postgraduate. Better planes means you know negative circumferential margin, resection margin, negative circumferential resection margin. Okay. I got it. These are the technical issues. But what is your final intent of giving neoadjuvant treatment to these patients? How does it help the patient? What does it reduce? Does it improve the survival, overall survival? Do you think that the patient, if you give mm -hmm. neoadjuvant treatment, is going to survive more? No, sir. Uh just to reduce the tumor burden. Tumor burden is already reduced. I mean, I don't think uh, you are reducing the tumor burden. Tumor burden as it is, when you say downstaging, tumor burden reduces. But does in a patient who's T3 and 0, if you reduce the tumor burden, how does it translate into what does fine? What are you finally trying to achieve? That's what I'm asking. You said it does not improve the overall survival. How does it help? So basically the idea of giving neoadjuvant treatment in rectal cancer is to uh, significantly decrease the chances of local recurrence. Okay. So if you look at the historical uh, studies, the local recurrence used to be to the tune of 25 to 30%. With neoadjuvant treatment, various uh, chemo radiation strategies, we are able to reduce it to about four to six percent. But it has not translated into an improved overall survival, as uh, shown by various trials. But local recurrence is definitely much reduced, and that is what we are trying to achieve with all of these neoadjuvant strategies. So wherever, if wherever is the tumor based on various parameters that we decide upon, what we are trying to achieve is a negative circumferential resection margin, which means that when we dissect, be it whatever modality, we are not going near the tumor circumferentially, and we are dissecting in a plane which is at least two, two millimeters from the tumor margin. Okay. And wherever there is a doubt about uh, this particular issue that we may or may not be able to achieve it, 
we try to sterilize this margin with our neoadjuvant strategies, neoadjuvant radiation strategies. In high-risk cancers, with nodal involvement, with sphincter involvement, with extramuscular, uh, extra mural vascular invasion, there are strategies wherein we also combine these with further chemotherapy after concurrent chemo radiation to further downstage these uh, patients and then do the surgery. I I think so. I think we will yep, have so to students, have uh, perhaps uh, a dedicated students, session this, this, on. You should answer it in uh, two ways. That there are two uh, situations where we give uh, neoadjuvant treatment. One is a large, bulky lesion low down in the rectum, especially in a male pelvis, where because of the bulk, you will not find space to dissect. So you want to downsize. The correct word is downsize. So the stage virtually remains the same. And that is how it helps in achieving a sphincter preservation. For that, you need to give the conventional long course radiation treatment with chemotherapy. The other is a resectable lesion. So imaging shows that the lesion is primarily resectable, but still you don't want to do upfront surgery. You want to give neoadjuvant treatment. And when you answer this question, you should use the terms which Dr. Bojwani mentioned sterilize the margins, have a clear uh, circumferential resectional margin, which is described as two millimeter, which of course comes once you have done it. That is a histopathological finding. And this conventionally used to be short course radiation, no chemotherapy, operate within a week. We will go into the details of that, that now there are new concepts. And this also, some people felt helped in dissection because of the radiation-induced edema. So these are two different situations, the resectable lesion, and the same concept is now coming in pancreas also, that even if the tumor is primarily resectable, there are reports coming in that you should give neoadjuvant treatment and then operate, although you could do upfront surgery. So one is this group, other is a large bulky uh, lesion. Now, the, the debate about short-course radiotherapy is that there are some reports which have come in where it has been shown that even after short course radiation, instead of operating at one week, which used to be the conventional teaching, if you wait longer, then you get more benefit of the radiation. And I had requested my colleague, uh, uh, Dr. Anushri Loyal from uh, radiotherapy department. Uh, uh, Anushri, if you are there, then uh, please uh, join in and uh, tell us something about neoadjuvant uh, treatment of rectal cancer. Uh, yes, sir. So uh, basically, neoadjuvant treatment, if we see, is it is indicated uh, T3, N1, uh, any node positive, and uh, all the T4 cases. So T1, T2, N0 cases, there is no need for neoadjuvant treatment. Uh, T3, N0 is a gray area. Uh, some people debate that it is not required, and some say that we should give neoadjuvant treatment. But for any T3, uh, on uh, N positive onwards, we should uh, offer new adjuvant treatment. So this new adjuvant treatment, uh, it comprises of either a long course radiotherapy, which is for a duration of five weeks, along with concurrent chemotherapy. The chemotherapy that we are using is capsetabin, or we can offer short course uh, radiotherapy. So when we give a uh, long course radiotherapy, we usually wait for around uh, six to eight weeks. And then we go for surgery, uh, re-evaluation and then surgery. And if we are giving short course uh, radiotherapy, the standard, as you said, uh, has been to wait for one week and then operate. So uh, if we are choosing for long course radiotherapy, we, uh, we usually select patients who have very bulky uh, disease or the CRM is threatened. Uh, in those cases, uh, long course radiotherapy is usually preferred. And sh short course radiotherapy with surgery within a week is usually done for early T3 node positive, <laughs> where we see the CRM is free or for a mid or low rectal lesions. Uh, the concept of uh, total new adjuvant therapy is also coming in. In total new adjuvant therapy, uh, we can go for either first chemotherapy followed by radiotherapy followed by surgery, or first radiotherapy followed by chemotherapy followed by surgery. And um, 
there are various trials which have shown that uh, using total neoadjuvant therapy it uh, has led to uh, better uh, pcr rates and also reduced incidence of distant metastasis uh, so uh, to summarize all the patients uh, with t3 and positive should be considered for neoadjuvant treatment and uh, depending on the mri and the uh, examination findings if it is crm threatened definitely it has to go for long course radiotherapy other patients we can go for short course radiotherapy anushi for the benefit of students could you please uh, clarify that how total neoadjuvant therapy uh, the tnt uh, in terms of dose and duration and drugs is different from the neoadjuvant therapy so what is what are the Detailed yes, sir. Difference. So in neoadjuvant therapy, as uh, I said, long course is for five weeks. Then we do surgery and followed by adjuvant therapy, depending uh, on the histopathology report. <laughs> so that is the uh, standard protocol or short course radiotherapy surgery plus minus adjuvant therapy. That is the stand. In neoadjuvant therapy, basically there are uh, two protocols. We either give short course radiotherapy, then we give chemotherapy. and then we do surgery so the chemotherapy here is given for around uh, 18 weeks or uh, the other protocol is first we give chemotherapy that is for uh, 12 weeks and then we do long course radiotherapy and then we do surgery so in in tnt the duration of uh, chemotherapy is longer as compared to the conventional neoadjuvant therapy as so in neo adjuvant therapy we give uh, uh, radi- uh, chemotherapy only along with radiotherapy only uh, that to long course radiotherapy in short course radiotherapy only rt is given yeah sure so, short course radiotherapy yeah. is for 5 days only that is it gets completed within a week yeah yeah for the benefit of the students i would like to <clears throat> kind of brief them because uh, surgery students tend to get confused initially Uh, when we say chemo radiation, we by and large mean it is concurrent chemo radiation, which means that while the radiation is going on, the patient is also getting chemotherapy. And in most patients with rectal cancer, it is with oral capacitabine. Therefore, the patient takes these tablets and keeps going for the radiation. And in long course chemo radiation, which is concurrent. chemo radiation it goes on for about uh, 25 28 cycles okay so it is only the tablets capsitabine which is the oral counterpart of the infusional 5 fluorouracil and it is supposed to be equally effective when we say chemotherapy it actually does not mean chemo radiation because chemotherapy which follows or precedes the chemo radiation may be with infusional various uh, drugs like you know so which oncologists can decide like fall fox and so many others so please do not confuse concurrent chemo radiation with chemotherapy and it is important for the students to understand why we are using total neoadjuvant therapy which would mean when we say tnt it means that all the neo ad all the treatment that we want to give other than surgery is completed before surgery and not after surgery because historically we were doing these treatments after surgery in fact 20 years back we were doing radiation also after surgery and chemotherapy also after surgery but there were implications in terms of morbidities and complications because the patients would not tolerate these treatments well and therefore it, many trials were conducted which have shown that if you give these treatments before surgery these are not only tolerated better morbidity is less but they might also be more effective okay and that is why the current concept supports the fact that surgery should be the last uh, kind of uh, armament uh, kind of your 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 weapon to treat these patients and everything else has been used before surgery so that these are tolerated better and the results are also better so anushree in tnt just to repeat again for students benefit the total duration of treatment will range anywhere from 12 to 18 weeks am i correct yes sir okay okay or maybe uh, more so, than that yes 
Yes, sir. Uh, I think we have five more minutes. So, Pranay, Pranay Gupta, can you come in? Just tell us briefly what is Habar Gama regime in the treatment of carcinoma rectum. Dr. Pranay? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Do you know what is Habar Gama regime? Uh, I'm not sure, sir. Okay. Any other student? Navendu? Dr. Navendu? Yes, sir. Yes. Do you know what is Habar Gama regime? No, sir. Mm -hmm. Any student who knows, please come in. Uh, sir? Yes, Navendu. Yes. So giving neoadjuvant chemotherapy and radiotherapy mm -hmm. and then looking for a pathological complete response. If there is a complete response, we don't move on to surgery. We wait and watch. That is the Habar Gama approach. So is it only pathological response? How do you assess response to any new treatment in any Radiological, radiological response. To start from clinical, clinical, endoscopic, radiological, uh, pathological, biological. Biological is by tumor marker, PET scan. So this applies in various combinations to any new adjuvant treatment when you want to assess the response. So Habar Gama regime, Abhagama is a lady radiotherapist from uh, Brazil, am I correct, or Argentina? Brazil, sir. Argentina, yes. So uh, once all these criteria are satisfied, then you say that we will not operate, but keep the patient under proactive surveillance because a significant number of these patients, I don't remember the exact percentage, will have recurrence of the disease and would require surgery. Rajesh, would you like to yeah. add more? So this this uh, regime is basically based at total neoadjuvant therapy, which gives you a complete clinical response based on imaging, endoscopy, and parameters, as sir mentioned. Now, when you have a complete clinical response, which is known as CCR, and you have ruled out any tumor uh, appearance on any of the imagings and endoscopy findings and also on digital rectal examination. These are the three important findings. Then you can subject to what is known as watch and wait policy. Please mind, it is not wait and watch. It is watch and wait, which means watching has more and got more emphasis. So you have to assess these patients initially at every six weeks and later at every three months. And that would mean minimum of sigmoidoscopy and digital rectal examination and at the slightest suspicion sub subjecting them, them to other mm -hmm. investigations. Why it is so, why it is required, because maybe not in India, and but very soon in India, if a patient has a complete clinical response based on total neoadjuvant therapy, you have to explain it to them that the tumor has disappeared for now but it might appear later. And then you have to counsel these patients and make a conjoint decision with the patient and then go ahead with surgery, if at all. Because at some point of time, if suppose the patient lands up in a morbidity and God forbid a mortality and the tumor was not there, you might be amenable to a medical legal issue. Maybe not now in India, but I'm sure at least maybe one or two years later in India, this will be a problem. So you have to be aware of what you're dealing with and how you are going to treat it. Having said that, it is very important to emphasize to the patient that watch and wait policy is basically because we expect at least about 30 to 40 percent of these patients to have the tumor again. And this tumor is known as this is known as tumor regrowth. So it regrows because there is a repopulation of tumor cells after some time and regrowth can happen. And we have had patients in our unit, I'm sure uh, voice or will note, wherein we have seen regrowth at nine months and one year wherein we have subjected to these patients. But these patients have to be very actively uh, surveillanced. Uh, my colleague, Dr. Vinay Mahala just corrected me that Habar Gama is from Brazil. Rajin, anything you want to say before we close? No, sir. It's okay. fine. Dr. Banerjee? 
you would like to add anything no sir thank you thank you thank you i have been listening to it very interesting thank you sir thank you so rajesh can we close yeah sure sir please thank you thank you very thank much you, for sir. joining jst once again thank you thank you thank you sir thank you sir bye good day sir